whenever you're doing this kind of work, you've got to ask yourself, am I competent to do this? This machine is plugged out, so I can't get electrocuted. If it was plugged in and I was doing this, there's every chance I could get electrocuted, and that wouldn't be good. So if you're not competent and if you're not sure what you're doing, just don't do it. Just don't play this game. It's not worth getting electrocuted. Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Pro Action washing machine. It's model number A105QW. It's way off in there. It's a standard washing machine, nothing too fancy. Probably a basic model from a large electronics store or something like that. I don't know if it works or not, and I don't particularly care. I don't want to use it. What I'm going to do is wire it for maximum speed so that when I throw a brick in it, it'll go bang. So I've got it laying down on its side. And I've got a cable from another washing machine. And this just has three bare ends, earth, live, and neutral. And a little cable with a spade connector, the female part of a spade connector on each end. And then looking in underneath, Here's the motor, and this one is a welling motor. It's a HXGP2I18, and it's a 220 to 240 volt washing machine. It's got two settings. It's got a three three amp setting at 30 watts for washing, and that would be a low speed. And it's got a high speed spin setting, three amps again, 300 watts for the spin. And I've got to try and figure out from the six wires that were going to it, which ones are going to be for, for maximum speed. So we've got six spade connectors in there. And first of all, I can rule out two straight away. So on the end of the motor, on one end or the other, there will always be, or almost always, a tachograph or a tachometer. And it just sends a signal to the computerized motor speed controller through two cables and they come out here, they're both white, so I can immediately discount the two connectors on the left hand side. Then I'll have two more going to the brushes. So the brushes are in these black boxes on each side of the motor. And if I can figure out which cables go to the brushes, then I'll be able to spot, let's see, up on top, you see what cape colour that is? There's a bit of sleeving there. Can't see that, but it comes down this way. It comes down under here. It's around the back and down under here. And if it's not that one, then it's the other one, which has the grey cable in it. So the grey cable here is a brush. So that's the third one from the front. That's the front. Get the two tacos, then a brush. And then you've got three more cables and they go into a different piece of black sleeving. I can't see which is which. Let's see if we can get a look from underneath. Can't really see that so I'll have to guess. I'll have to guess at that and we'll see how we go. Maybe do I have to guess? Let me take off the connector block. Flat bladed screwdriver might get it, that might be able to see a bit more. Whenever you're doing this kind of work, you've got to ask yourself, am I competent to do this? This machine is plugged out, so I can't get electrocuted. If it was plugged in and I was doing this, there's every chance I could get electrocuted, and that wouldn't be good. So if you're not competent and if you're not sure what you're doing, just don't do it. Just don't play this game. It's not worth getting electrocuted. Lock off. No. What's going on there? So looking at that, black cable comes from the brush here and it goes up and then appears to come back as a different cable. I don't know if that's the same cable or what. So I don't want to disconnect this because that makes more work, but it makes sense if the two brushes are there, and then the two other cables are there. So what I need to do is, I need to put the power into a brush, then jump 
with a little jumper cable from a brush to a winding so that I'm presuming the red and the brown are windings inside in the you can see them there that cut those copper windings and then take the power out through the neutral if that makes sense so live in to a brush jump from the other brush to a winding and then neutral to the other winding let's give it a go so power into a brush jump from a brush to a winding and I'm gonna go the whole way to the end here for no reason other than I don't really want to have well actually I could do it that way I'll do it that way brush to a winding and then out through another winding and those two spade connectors there on the end very difficult to see are the taco let's zoom in on that and do it again so power comes in brown cable to the brush gray cable then it goes from the other brush black cable into this jumper cable comes around into the red cable into a winding and then out again from the winding to the neutral cable and hopefully if I plug this in now it should go woo the doors open there's a hose in there close that door make less noise got my power cable here let's plug it in and see what happens all the lights might go off nope we were right So that's how you do it, and it's just experience has taught me that that's how it works. Into a brush, brush to a winding, winding out. So just so that it doesn't dance away on me, I'm gonna try and secure this back on. It's plugged out again, of course. How is that fixed? Hooks over the end, somehow snaps into place. There it is. Let's put that screw back in. Let's put that screw back in, get the connector block secure. And then, Need to somehow route this cable out. I can just have it coming out from underneath, I guess. And what I'll do is I'll put a cable tie on here, somewhere, on here on the motor. And I just want a cable tie. I just want to fix this cable so that it doesn't get snagged. Because what I've seen happen in the past is that when the machine dances about, the cable just falls off and that stops the fun. That there should keep these cables in good, 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 good order. Let's get a bit of tension on that. So that's not going to go anywhere. So I can have my cable coming out underneath. It might get crushed, but I'm not really worried. Strangely, what I might do actually is remove the fascia on the front, put it out that way. Could do that. Just knock a hole in the back. One way or the other, that's us ready for destruction. That's how you wire a pro action washing machine for maximum speed. It's also how you wire any universal washing machine motor. That's any washing machine motor that's 220 volt and has brushes, carbon brushes on each side. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Check out my other videos. I've got loads of videos on how to wire washing machine motors in my washing machine motor wiring playlist. I've also got a video that's really good about how you wire these motors and regulate the speed on them with a little voltage controller. That's really useful. Right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for destruction. See you later.